All right, I got a follow-up video for my drill battery video I previously did talking about storage and discharge temperature. Now we're gonna talk about motorcycle batteries, marine batteries, and camper batteries if you're using lithium iron or lithium ion. So with the motorcycle batteries, you're more than likely gonna be using lithium ion cells. So if you were to open your, your battery up, you're gonna see a pack similar to this. This is just a DIY build that I did. These are in parallel and series to make my 12 volt battery pack with a battery management system on here. These batteries, if you have one in your bike, you do not want to put a battery maintainer on it. It is not like your lead battery. You don't have to keep these at a high state of charge. You'll actually start to destroy them if you leave them plugged into a battery maintainer like a battery tender junior or something. I've noticed that they've come out with a little bit deceiving but a charger with lithium, uh, I believe it's actually lithium iron phosphate charger that they have. So that's gonna be more for your campers and your boat batteries for your trolling motors. These ones here, you don't wanna keep them on a battery maintainer charger. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to have these between 30 and 50% state of charge during the winter. And it's a good idea to bring them into the house, keep them at room temperature, keep them half charged, and they'll last you for years and years. Now for the campers, the trolling motors, what you typically will buy on Amazon or something is a battery pack pre-built. It has the battery cells in them, has a BMS already built into them, and you just have your two terminals for your 12 volt. You plug your trolling motor into it, you load up your camper with them in series or parallel, and there you go. But what you have to realize is you don't want to leave them and store them with a battery maintainer like you would with lead acid. So how you'd want to store them is you'd want to bring them in with lithium iron phosphate especially. You're going to want to discharge them and track your discharging to get your 50% state of charge. If you look at the discharge curve of a lithium iron phosphate versus lead acid, there is a very steady line across the voltage and then it drops off when it's dead. So if you're just trying to figure it out by voltage, you won't be able to. So with those batteries, if you were to pull them apart, you would find these cells in them. Get another cell here. So if you open up those batteries, you'll find these cells in them. You'll probably find one that's 100 amp hour, 110 amp hour, and a little bit smaller than the profile of these batteries. But these are the cells that are gonna be inside of your boat batteries lithium iron phosphate bolt batteries you're using for your trolling motors or for your solar for your RV or whatnot you're gonna find these cells in them um, I'm building my own it's a lot cheaper to build your own all you need is the cells you put four of them in, in series that gives you your 12 volt slap a BMS on there throw some buzz bars on to connect it all and much cheaper you can build your own and customize it. But with these batteries as well, these want to be between 30 and 50% state of charge during storage. So if you leave your camper plugged in during the winter time, that's another bad thing to do. It's going to keep these at a high voltage and is also if they self discharge in the cold weather and then they start to charge when it's below freezing, you're also going to ruin these batteries. So a good idea to do in the winter time when you're storing your trailer, winterizing it, your RV, is you're going to want to take these batteries out and bring them into the house, discharge them to 50% state of charge, and then just leave them for the winter time. Summertime, put them back in, plug it in, charge it up, you're good to go. To go from your house to a campsite and then you're plugging into electrical and then back home and you're plugging into the house. That's not gonna be good for these batteries either because these need to be discharged and charged to flex. And also, they don't like to be kept at a full high state of charge constantly. So these are not ideal for somebody who's just driving to camp, plugging in, driving home, plugging in. If you're driving out somewhere and you're just running off of battery, these are great. You So I'll show you in the spec sheet for these cells particularly which again, if you uh, put them together. So here, uh, working temperature zero to 60 degrees. So again, 
if during the winter you're plugging your camper and you're leaving these cells in your camper RV and you're plugging it in and it self discharges and then your inverter charger charges it back up you're charging at freezing temperature so working temperature 0 to 30 and then uh, 0 to 60 sorry and then storage temperature so for the short term within a month you can store it at 20 minus 20 to 45 degrees Celsius but again if you're leaving it over the winter uh, you're going to run into over over a month of storage so long-term storage within a year uh, 0 to 35 degrees Celsius um, monthly discharge rate it'll self discharge about 3% per month so storage state of charge 30 to 50% state of charge is what they're recommending for these cells for lithium iron phosphate the same applies for your lithium ion for your motorcycle battery so again you don't want to plug it into a maintainer um, if we scroll down uh, so batteries should be stored more than one month indoors in a dry clean environment at zero degrees celsius to 35 degrees celsius and then the battery should be charged and discharged every six months so what that's going to do is encourage the battery uh, the electrolytes and electricity in the battery to stay normalized and then store between 30 to 50 percent so if you store these at 50 percent it self discharges a little bit not a big deal six months down the road drain it charge it and then you're good to use it so these batteries here will last like these are slated for i believe 3,000 cycles so if i was to charge and discharge them every day that would be about eight years i only plan on using these sparsely so i'll probably use them for six months charge and discharge every day so i'm looking at about 16 years for these to last so very interesting. So again, uh, I hope that helps you out. Um, I'm gonna be transferring a little bit more into battery builds. I'm gonna be showing how I'm building my packs. Um, be quite interesting stuff coming up in the future. Uh, if you're interested in any of this lithium stuff or solar off-grid inverters, uh, subscribe to the channel, like. Uh, comment down below if you do use uh, lithium iron phosphate in your camper RV or if you're using uh, lithium ion batteries on your motorcycle let me know how it's working out for you uh, let me know if this information has been good for you maybe I'll do more videos like this helping you or teach you how to store and how to use your batteries appropriately so they'll last you 8 to 16 years depending on your usage comment down below let me know and thanks for watching bye